Gonna start the day off with some cuteness for you guys. That's right, we have a box here. Uh, you guys know I'm becoming a turtle freak. That's right, there's some pretty cool turtles in here. What do you say we unbox them? And that's right, we got some little turtles in here. Let's see what we have. Oh my gosh, they're actually in these cold containers. You can see them right away, unbelievable. I love these guys. I've always wanted to have this vision of the pond that's behind me. Instead of having just normal sliders, actually have albino red-eared sliders right here. So we ended up getting a whole bunch of little baby albino red-eared sliders. Look at how absolutely adorable they are. There's actually 15 in total here. I'm just gonna take a look, I mean, wow, look at how incredible. These are about three months old, so the guy that actually produced these, a friend of mine down in Texas, actually wanted to hold them for about three months so that they were really well started for me, so that that way we don't have any losses and stuff like that. Now these won't go directly into the big pond because of course we're gonna to wanna to get a little more size to them, so we're gonna set them up in a different pond for a little while just to kinda of grow them out for the next maybe two or three months. Once they get about two inches long or so, that's when we'll be able to actually put them in this pond over here, and I think they're gonna do absolutely well but wow, look at how cool these little monkeys are. I love them. Take a look. Oh my gosh, Wait, where'd one go? There it goes. Oh my gosh, come here, buddy, bud. Look at that, oh, these are two different sizes, but you can see the red on this, again, the red-eared sliders. That red marking is what they call them, red-eared sliders, because it almost looks like they have red ears. But again, these are a recessive mutation and albinos. They're gonna be absolutely incredible for this pond. Take a look at these things right here. Holy cow, this is so cool, man. I am so excited about them, for sure. So uh, again, nice, well-started red-eared sliders. Love these guys. Some more turtles for the Reptaria. We're over at BHB. We're gonna get our red-eared sliders set up over here just so they can get a little bit more established and everything. But this is the tank they're going in. Let's go ahead and make it look nice. Obviously the end goal is to get these guys to go into this pond right here because they're just cool and we're always wanting to do kind of cool experience for people so rather than having normal red-eared sliders we'll have albino red-eared sliders. Now the deal is the red-eared sliders that are in there now actually were in there since they were about this size and basically what that did was that gave them an opportunity to learn how to hide really well. That's why we're going to keep these over at the other place to kind of interact with them and hopefully they'll come up and actually eat out of our hands before they come over here. That way when we get them into the big pond people can still feed them and actually interact with them because honestly we have like 20 sliders in there and you walk in and you can never even see any of them so we're going to work harder on habituating socializing these guys to actual people before they go into the enclosure so it's probably going to take us two or three months to get them to the point where they're big enough as well as kind of more socialized and then ultimately they'll be here and that way when you come to the rep term you're not just seeing normal red eared sliders you're seeing albinos i always want to give you guys tips and tricks when it comes to breeding snakes after all that's where this channel started when it's really breeding snakes right well this happens to be a Highball ball python that laid eggs the 12th of May, right? So basically what we do is during the summer months after they lay, we basically just maintain feed them. So we want her to get back up to body size. You can see she looks good. She doesn't look fat. She doesn't look skinny. She kind of just looks like average, right? So we'll give them maybe one rat a week, that type of thing. Now this time of year, they start to really ramp up, right? So they'll go from one rat to sometimes two rats a week. Now we don't want to power feed them yet. We're just gonna kind of increase that food by a little bit start to get that feeling like, all right, breeding season is coming. And we'll do that all the way through September and most of October. Once we get to the end of October, then we start really pushing food to the females, right? We're gonna wanna probably double or triple the amount of food. And then in November, we start introducing males. The idea is to food cycle. So basically what you're doing is heavy feeding during the winter when you're breeding them, then maintain feeding them through the summer, and then slightly increasing the food in the fall time. And that's the way you can actually get the animals to ovulate. So these 
girls are about ready to start taking off. Continuing hatching baby ball pythons, and I was so excited about this clutch hatching out here. Remember when we cut the actual ghost clown clutch, or possible ghost clown clutch, and there were some ghosts? Well, guess what? They hatched out. Look at that. These are, again, double recessive mutations. So this is a hypo clown, the first ones that we ever produced. And believe it or not, it turned out to be a pair of them, too. So that is absolutely incredible. This is actually the little girl right here. Has some really interesting color and pattern on her. Love that. So I don't know. I probably will keep the pair. Not 100% sure we did actually end up hatching two clowns that are had for ghost as well which is pretty cool and then a couple double head ghost clowns here so again a first time for me here uh I, they've been produced for quite some time but i have never produced them i've tried for the last three years and missed on my odds so it's always awesome to finally hit that success so i'm super excited about that then we ended up right here we just have some really cool animals here this was actually a banana fire spinner blast bred just to a normal ball python so we ended up getting of course a bumblebee here another little bumblebee be here and then a bunch of banana stuff that's really cool this is just a banana pinstripe here which is really absolutely beautiful the banana and the pin go really well just get all that purple color where the pinstripe is then of course we ended up with a couple of just like the dad these are actually banana fire spinner blast right here so they've got the banana they got the pastel they got the fire they got the pinstripe and they've got the spider ball python and then we ended up with a little fire banana spider here which is really cool too again the spider stuff's always amazing especially with banana and then just a couple spider ball pythons and a pinstripe ball python here so definitely a really beautiful clutch it likes variety and i like those clutches because oftentimes they're kind of entry level right they're not too expensive so they're kind of cool and they're absolutely beautiful and speaking about beautiful some really cool stuff here this was actually a hat russo bred to a banana lesser ghi which is pretty cool so we have all kinds of little stuff here we actually have this one is a hat russo ghi then we have a bunch of little ghis right here these are just normal GHIs, which stands for gotta have it. Incomplete dominant, dark morph animal, really cool. Gonna definitely breathe that into the Barney Ball project. Then we ended up with just a nice little banana. Weirdly enough, we didn't hit any banana GHIs, no banana lessers, or a banana hat russos, which is kind of weird. And then, of course, we ended up with this one right here, which is actually a blue-eyed leucistic, which is a hat russo, and the lesser from the daddy here. So just some really beautiful clutches of snakes that have hatched out today. So we'll get all this stuff set up. They'll get eating here within the next couple weeks. Hit them up on the BHB website if you guys are interested in any of them. Just going through some snakes as I'm down here in the dungeon, an absolutely beautiful jungle carpet python. We produced these guys a year and a half ago, and we hung on to a handful of them, and wow, I tell you what, they are absolute rippers. Again, these come from Australia, from a place called the Atherton Tablelands. They're a smaller carpet python, and the pure Atherton Tablelands only get about four and a half or five feet. Most of the ones in America, to be honest with you, are probably a little bit mixed, either into coastals, maybe even diamond and python stuff like that but the fact is they might get like five maybe six foot somewhere in that range nevertheless unbelievably shocking animals and then this one's another absolute ripper which actually is a sibling to the jungle that i just showed you but this is what they call a jungle jag now the jag is actually an incomplete dominant thing just kind of reduces the head pattern reduces the body pattern has that really cool head stamp that is absolutely ridiculous on it and again when you get the jungle into them they're really really amazing but again now you're starting to mix different localities outside the Atheridin Tablelands, so they start to get different size and so on like that. But nevertheless, this is an absolute ripper, and these are both females, and they'll probably be ready to breed next year. It's been a while since I talked to you about the expansion type of stuff. Uh, I am still super excited about it, and basically we're just in a spot where there's not much really going on. October 6th is the meeting that we have in the city for what they call a variance, which gives us the approval to actually do it, and then we have to actually apply for permits, and that'll take six or eight weeks. So basically we hope that everything goes well on October October 6th because it's a public meeting meaning that anyone in the area can actually come and uh, view their grievances with it or view their excitement whatever the case is and then it's I think it's a seven panel commission so we have to have at least four of the seven people vote yes for us allowing to do it like I said all things I've heard from the city seem like they're super excited about it. so I don't think we're gonna have a problem but it's always a little bit nerve-wracking and then we go and apply for the building permits which will take six to eight weeks so sometime around the end of the year we'll get the permits and everything back then we can actually start to figure out what we're going to break ground so we're still working on it guys just wanted to give you a quick update by the way thank you for everyone that donated on the gofundme i'm
I'm going to put a link in the description to all the GoFundMe pages. Feel free to go over there and check them out. All your support means the world to me. Thank you for all the people that have already donated and thank you to the people that are going to donate. It really does help this project move along. But listen, it's still hot and heavy. We're just in a waiting period for a little bit longer. The last couple of years haven't been very good to me when it comes to rainbow boas. And the truth is, it's just kind of me missing the season the way I should breed them. I used to breed rainbow boas every single year. So this year I'm really committed to getting rainbow boa babies again. And this happens to be a leucistic rainbow boa. Absolutely wonderful animal. He fathered a bunch of litters a few years ago. Then the last two years I've just struck out. And like I mentioned, we're beefing these animals up and getting them really ready for breeding season this year so we can have a super successful 2022 with rainbow boas. And then we actually have a T-positive albino rainbow boa. Now this is a male, Ooh, and he's just about ready to breed. He's a feisty little monkey. Some rainbow boas can be a little bit nippy, but most of them are actually pretty darn cool. But I love the T-positive ones because they have that kind of purplish brown look to them, have a little bit of the purple ring still kind of showing through. Absolutely amazing. This will be the first time we ever tried to breed these, so hopefully this male will get a little bit uh, a little bit calmed down, number one, and hopefully we'll produce some babies. And then, of course, we have the T-negative albinos as well, which I absolutely love. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. Again, this is another male of the ready to breed this year. So hopefully we'll produce some T-positive albinos, some T-negative albinos, and some leucistic rainbows this coming year. Definitely absolutely amazing. And we also work with the hypos as well too. So uh, rainbow boas, hey, I've got to get it this year. And I'm going to put a lot of effort into it because I miss producing these little monkeys. I'm ready to you ready unbox. unbox. Okay, we've got okay, something. Go. Hey, hang on. This comes from Europe first off. I, well, I'm not sure Europe. It's international. So I shouldn't say it's Europe, but I think Legal. it's... Uh, but it, listen. Chocolates. Do you think it's chocolates or do you think it's something that's broken chocolates, chocolates. or marbles or marbles okay we got let's see a bag inside of a bag that's oh, always a good start thought i was unboxing this is amazon oh yeah you're here you unbox that. <laughs> Wait, what, is that? what? what? Oh, how is this like an old label like maybe this has been out there forever three years old 2017. does it say 2017? <laughs> <laughs> okay Let's go. You're unboxing it. Okay, go. <laughs> okay. Whoa, there's two things. I don't two know things. what they are yet. Ooh, so uh, cafe. Lori, I'm Lori for today. You're oh, 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 oh this is actually our friend Jane, actually British born Jane. Uh we got this, more beads. She had and she's oh this is cool. Oh, look at oh that. that's dope. I like it. Gleaming. I was getting a little bit light on the actual, you know, jewelry. Yeah, I know side. you were running around real quick. Recently. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, thank you, Jane. I appreciate you. That got here quick. She said she was sending it like last week. So, wait. Uh, let's see what they do. Oh yeah, these you are got like tiger's different. eye on yours. Tiger's see eye. Let's see what the gemstones provide. All right, let's see. This stone provides good luck, wealth, and courage. Oh, good. I want that back. No. I need the good luck right now. <laughs> Malachite, which is absorbs and clears oh. negative energy Malachite. and pollutions from the atmosphere and body. I need that. Uh, Shungite, is that what it's called? Shungite? I don't That's know what that is. Uh, shields and protects from uh, electromagnetic radiation. Oh. Oh. Good, because I'm around a lot of radiation a in my life. Here. Uh, smoky quartz, ooh, I love smoky quartz. Removes all negative energies and replaces the lighter, uplifting. I feel lighter and uplifted even more right now. I feel it like, just around you. Uh, and then we got turquoise, of course, the powerful protective stone that shields from all types of negative energy. See, I don't even want to be around you, Noah, well, because your negativity is really getting me. Well, mine protects from negative yeah. energy as well. It's like we're, oh, we can't be together. But is that a double negative? Yeah. It just now attracts negative energy. Yeah. Now we're just like, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jane. We appreciate you. Well, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, can you do me a favor? Can you hit this playlist right over here? One or two videos would mean the world to me. You know what else would mean the world to me? Right over here. Hit that subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'm going to see you in the next one.